Hello there, everyone. Welcome to PhotoForge Creative. My name is Brett Malley. I am an author, I'm an educator, and all around Photoshop magician. So today we're going over Creative Overview Episode 1 on this image that I call Wait For Me about these ladybugs flying away and these other bugs watching, and it's a lot of fun. We're gonna do uh, a breakdown layer by layer, but really, really quickly because it's an overview. And at the very end, stay tuned because I'll go over uh, a little bit of tips and tricks on how to composite shadows, which is really important, right? They're like the trickiest thing ever. So without further ado, let's jump right in and do this overview. Here we go. So what has been done with this image? First of all, let's peel back all the effects. I started with a main layer that's a base and I had to add a bit more sky to this for the sky replacement feature, which is right there. Uh, after that, we needed to bring in this big old mountain and then we did a little bit of color adjustment and then select and mask and get rid of that sky with masking. And then it's time to bring that main featured bug. Here we go, started off with a vector mask to get that really smooth edge and curves uh, and then started doing a little bit of lighting adjustments just to get it in the ballpark, right? These are some macro shots that I took. Uh, it was missing some of its underside there, so filled that in with uh, some <laughs> some other things there. It looks like I corrected a leg because it wasn't exciting enough, and since it's an insect, it needs six legs, so we need to add all of those in there, and it can't just be flying on its own because, you know, ladybugs don't fly, of course. They need balloons, especially giant ones, so here we go. Made a balloon selection here, selected out um, the sky, masked it out, and then started doing adjustments from there, uh, including bringing in in all of the uh, little strings. Yep, that's holding it up. So there they are. Uh, so next we needed one that wasn't having such great luck or possibly could be just on the ground. So the first thing that I did was do a basic mask and then do a secondary mask on a group folder that was over that. We took out the people because yeah, this shouldn't be people in this. And then finally, since ladybugs are, are gonna be flying here, we gotta bring in a ladybug, add some shadows. It was overall too light. And we need to get some directional light too, right? That light was coming from that, that left side there with the sun. And then this is the part that we'll break down a little bit later where you you need to generally get shadows down with a normal layer, paint everywhere, and start building up with an overlay layer until it feels like it's sinking in. Shadows are tricky. Finally, we put a balloon guy way up in the distance there. Uh, that's that's definitely having a lot of fun. All the same techniques in the other one. Finally, we need to bring that foreground. Uh, and this was piece by piece with just different parts of flowers. You don't have to use the entire flower if you shot a, a section of something you're gonna bring in. You can just use little bits and pieces of it. Notice how the color is really not right yet, right? So you need to darken it down. And at the very end, you'll notice I'll do a color adjustment. For, for now though, it's just getting things in the ballpark. And then I start muting things a little bit and then uh, doing a little bit of color color correction with some adjustment layers um, that are on top of that entire group. You can clip adjustments to entire groups, which is really cool. Here's this bug. He needed to be masked out. He's super blurry, he needed some help, but luckily it's in the foreground, so it could be blurry. It can get away with that kind of thing. Um, and lastly, you need to darken down those edges and then adding that little bit of shadow really makes it sink in, right? Especially in those legs. We'll break that down in a little bit as well. So from there, it's just doing over compositional things, some eye flow things, and then finding, in, uh, finding and adding in those final visual effects. <sighs> and that, in a nutshell, <laughs> is a composite overview uh, with not a lot of time to go over it. If we were to talk through every little bit, it would take a long time for that, even though this went by really quickly. So from this point on, let me give you something tangible and let me breathe. Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about some uh, shadows and how you can composite shadows and how they can really, really make a difference in your composite. So without waiting any longer, let's jump into that. So here we go. Okay, so <laughs> taking this down in speed a little bit and getting a little more uh, tangible with um, some actual techniques you can come away with from, from today's video, whatever this is, uh, Shadows, compositing shadows. It's usually the make it or break it kind of thing of where things touch. Um, it either things look really, really fake and off, even if our eyes can't quite tell what exactly is off, we can 
figure out that there's something definitely off about it. Usually it's the shadows. So let me show a couple pieces in this since this is um, one element within this composite where shadows kind of make all the difference in, in selling little bits. And sometimes the details, uh, it all has to be as something small, but it can make a really big difference overall. So what am I talking about here? Let's look at this grounded bug, all right, over here. Oh, wait, I have the effects on. There we go. Let's take the effects off. Okay, there we go. Uh, so here's this grounded bug. Um, and yeah, that's that looks, you know, half believable for this being really kind of fun and silly and, and just ridiculous. Uh, but let's look when we take off this shadow layer that I have. And there are just three layers that are here, and we'll go over them. Um, so without that, ah, that just looks so off, right? It looks like it was cut out. It's It's the collage zone, which is not where you want seamless composites to be. It takes us out of sort of suspending our disbelief with it and having a lot of fun. So here are the three main ingredients for compositing shadow shadows that I always use. Uh, not that this is using all of those, but here's here's where, where to start if you're compositing shadows. So number one, when you have shadows in a composite, um, what's underneath that layer, uh, whatever that is, the details, the highlights, everything is darker, right? We know there are shadows, but what that means is we can paint with a layer that's on normal blending mode. So if you're not sure about blending modes, we have classes on, on blending modes. Uh, I've done classes through Kelby One. Um, there's many books out there, so we're not gonna go into deep details about that. However, I will show you where it is and what I'm talking about. So right here, um, let's do layer by layer for this shadow. Um, here's this layer that's just darkening everything down. So when you have, um, again, shadows, it's the highlights. Yes, the shadows get deeper too, but the highlights don't have that same contrast, right? They're not um, so bright for, for where they, they are. So you need to bring that down. So if you just create a blank new layer, and let's take this other one off, and hit B for brush, and I should just be painting with hopefully a nice soft and round, soft and fuzzy there. Um, if you just paint where it says blending mode, right, this is a blending mode right here, and there's a bunch of different ways you can have it interpret those layers. We won't go into all of those, but if you start with the default of normal, that's a great place, if you start, <laughs> if you start actually painting with black, great place just to start making things a little bit darker. So bring down everything just a little bit. Don't worry about getting it too dark under um, anything. You just want to get it generally darker, just a little bit, right? And it's gonna look a little flat and it's gonna look a little kind of not quite there yet. And that's where the next technique comes in. And this is where you can keep that contrast while still darkening down even more. And you do that with another new layer, but you change that blending mode from where it says normal, okay, right here where it says normal, to do, do, do overlay. Overlay is so critical here because what that does, it has a threshold where the darker something is, meaning like the darker texture in that grass gets even darker, which is what happens in the shadows. And it will leave those highlights alone, not touching them as much. So in effect, you make things darker, which things are in the shadows and shade, and then you darken those shadow bits even more, and that in increases the contrast a little bit, but without bringing those highlights back up, right? You dimmed them down. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so here we're painting. See how it's able to leave that texture and even bring a little bit of it out? Let's do it extreme over here so you can just see. Yeah, see see how that works? It, it darkens things, but without uh, just making it really flat. So that's a good way to increase whatever darkness you started with uh, your normal blending mode, right? Your normal layer. Um, this is where you can do an overlay version. So far we have this normal one, got it a little bit darker, and then this one, okay, where it's blending mode overlay. Um, from there, usually you might need to do some coloring. So you can do a new layer with uh, either a color balance that you paint in to correct for for coloring. Sometimes shadows are cooler than if there's uh, the light, so you can, you can play with that as well. Uh, you could look at Monet's haystacks, right, and do color studies of, of what shadows and lights. Uh, the main thing is, here's another tip, is look at whatever shadows exist within your image. That's your template. So always look and to see how dark does it get there? What kind of coloring am I seeing in that? Um, and then that's what you know to bring in with your effects and your layers uh, and your various adjustments and other places. So really look at those shadows in different parts of the image. Um, if there's other places that have similar content, you can bring that in. So let's see what I did for this. I had a normal layer. 
originally, and that just brought everything down darker a little bit. Here's the one I just painted. Let's get rid of those. Uh, here's one where I brought in some details. So this is where I painted with an overlay brush, but with a textured uh, an overlay layer, excuse me, but with a textured brush. And see how that just brought in a little bit more grittiness, kept it from being too flat, while still using that same, tech, same technique of really crushing those darks more than those light parts. Uh, and then finally, another overlay to really sort of sink it in and crush it, because there's no light getting past this big bulbous bug, <laughs> this giant ladybug. Um, there might be some light getting past this, but if you look over here, look how dark it is in the deepest shadows there where nothing's getting past those roots and it's blocking all that light. It's really, really dark. So that's my template. Um, and so when I try to emulate that, this might be a little intense, but it also kind of covers up some of the other uh, compositing seams there. By the time that you're looking at this full screen, it sinks in. Again, let's look at the before and after of the shadows, right? Really big difference. Um, so with this bug, let's zoom in on this little guy. Uh, this is a little bit simpler. This is uh, was just painted, <laughs> here we go, with a normal layer. So here's the bug layer and here's, here's the shadow. Here we go. So all this is, look right in this element. So see how it's just sitting on top? Okay, this bug's so blurry. <laughs> Don't look too closely. Um, but it just looks like it's sitting on top without that. And let's look at it without it. So when I first had this bug, um, see how it's too light? Um, so sometimes you need to paint shadows and darken things down on the object itself, right? And then you have to meet them in the middle. So it's not always just about fixing what's underneath, um, but sometimes you actually have to do what's called clipping. Uh, so this is a clip. <laughs> so another tip here, as fast as we can, I'm holding down Option or Alt if you're on a PC, and if you click directly between if you make a, a new blank layer and click between these two, you will be able to clip this layer where it, will only, where it will only affect the layer directly beneath it rather than all around. So I have two different layers that do that, one for coloring, right? There we go, that's what I was talking about for our color. You can change the blending mode to color. Uh, and then one for changing the lighting of this bug. Look at the difference that makes in itself. Okay, so there we go. So really darkening, getting some directional light happening. This is with blending mode normal, just literally painting with a darker brush just in those areas. Uh, again, if it wasn't clipped, right, we can see, you can see exactly where I painted, just these big blobs. But a second, the second that you say, only apply this to the bug's legs, oh man, right? It only exists where that bug is. So as long as you made a mask that's somewhat believable, you'll be in good shape. Uh, so, and then it becomes about the small detail of really making it feel like that bug's sitting there, right? This is <laughs> a very sort of fantastical version of it, but still we want to add enough detail that it that it feels right, maybe on an emotional level, or um, it just makes us not think like, ah, what's off? Let me find all the things off. We want to sort of avoid taking people out of, you know, enjoying that, the sort of narrative that's happening. So here we go, bug shadow, and look right here specifically, and then over in here. I'll just sort of toggle this off and on, right? Right? Isn't that cool? There's not much. I'm just kind of painting and this is just a normal layer. Added a little bit more there, but man, it really makes it sink in there. So there we go. That's a lot of sort of shadow tips and ideas um, for you probably maybe more intermediate uh, folks that are compositing out there. And for those that are just beginning, this was really fast. I understand it. We'll have other tutorials just for you um, that will really break down the basics and make sure that you have a, a solid understanding. But for now, get inspired, get excited, uh, shoot and just play in Photoshop, right? Have digital courage uh, and just go at it and have a, a really good time. Maybe fly a balloon with your giant ladybug. I don't know. Anyways, that's it for now. My name is Brett Malley. Welcome again to PhotoForge Creative. I'm really excited to be starting this channel up again. So. Catch you next time. Take care, everyone. Be well. Be safe.